Okay. All right. All right. Are we on? Yes, we are. Okay. Welcome to our gluten-free kitchen of almost 11 years. There's no other way for us to eat. So, we have been helping a lot of people lately, and I said, kids, let's start doing this recipe online for the people. Stop them at the grocery store. We've been giving our bread recipe out, so let's just do it. So we're doing it. So, in our kitchen, obviously you put your hair up. In my restaurant, we wear gloves and hats. This is our own space, so we'll be cash. We start our bread recipe. You can do it in the oven. Awesome. Let's go for ease. Three teenage kids, bread machine. Two pound bread setting um, for three hours. If you have one that's two and a half hours, that's fine. Do not use the gluten-free setting. I do not recommend it. It makes a far more superior loaf of bread on the regular setting. We have gone through at least six of these in the last 11 years, so we use it often. So you start off with your wet ingredients first, those three large eggs. Try to be organic. If you could, organic is obviously with eggs and milk is the best. Then, um, you try to put some, um, possibly some warm water instead of just straight up cold water into your recipe. So we need our quarter of a cup of oil. Can you, can you get me all the cups? A little bit. Quarter of a cup of oil. You can use olive oil. For this one, we use it so often, we make at least three loaves a week, so we do a quarter cup of canola oil. And then, like I said, you're going to put some warm water, and you're going to do one and a half cups. Three, four, five, six. So we have a quarter cup of canola, one and a half cups of warm water, three large eggs. Then we go for the dry ingredients. A lot of people who have celiac disease have, are also lactose intolerant, so you do not have to put the dried milk in. I put the dried milk in because why not some extra calcium? Our kids are not lactose intolerant with their celiac, so we are very fortunate. Um, on top of the dried milk, you're going to put your flours. One rule of thumb for gluten-free baking is one part starch to two parts flour or protein. So. What we're gonna do, we love, could you get me the spin wheel, the teaspoon, tablespoon, mm -hmm. spin wheel? Okay, what we do is, straight off the bat, we're gonna get one cup of tapioca. We need the half cup one, that'd be great. You never half said cup. how much dried milk. Oh, thank you. Good. That would be two thirds cup of dried milk. <laughs> I love having a good kid who remembers everything. So we have one cup of tapioca. Um, I do make a mess in my kitchen. Not, I do not own a shirt that doesn't have oil stains in the midsection and bleach stains. But this is reality, right? Not pretend someone cleaning up behind us. So we've got one cup of tapioca um, with our dry ingredients. We've already had our dry milk in there. I like to put my xanthan gum, one tablespoon of xanthan gum, so I don't forget it right in there. One tablespoon, and then my kids have blamed me over the years of forgetting a crucial ingredient, which you would never believe, but one teaspoon of salt is crucial. Without it, it doesn't taste good. Mm, I got a lot good. of, yeah, mom. Usually when that loaf comes out, the kids are like, what'd you forget, mom? Okay, so now the tapioca is done. We're gonna move on, don't forget. Oh, don't forget three, three tablespoons of organic um, sugar. Three tablespoons. That'll help your yeast. Your yeast needs to grow. That's another reason why it's important to put warm water in and not cold water. Now, this is the part where everybody gets freaky. Don't get freaky, okay? Play and have fun. Believe it or not, my kids love this combination. Half a cup of flax meal. Organic brown flax, um, golden flax meal. This is your favorite one. So we did half a cup of flax. Half a cup of oat flour. It looks like a bad baby. Is that? As you haven't noticed, she's from New York. Oh. <laughs> and I live in Georgia. <laughs> so I'm southern now. All right. Then we like the organic brown rice flour. Um, brown rice flour actually gives you a lot more fluffy loaf of bread. 
And we like to use brown rice flour in baking too, so. Do um, I do, I have one right here. Can you cut it for me, Sure. We'll have to. Okay, we need another half cup of that. We did wash down our surface before. And now, on top of our dry ingredients, we've gotten all of them down. So we had, recap, on our flowers. One cup of tapioca. Our recipe, we like to do half a cup of flax, half a cup of oat, one cup of brown rice. But, a couple of days ago, made a loaf, um, third cup of flax, and all the rest was brown rice. So you get my gist, one, one part to two parts. One part starch to two parts flour. Play around. We've done buckwheat, we've done quinoa, we've done millet, millet, whatever you want to call it. Um, what else have we done? We've done tons, but play around. We've made some crappy breads along the way too. All right, yeast. Two and a quarter teaspoons. Now, as you can tell with me, I like to just kind of, I'm not any of these famous people on TV with the measuring. Sometimes I'm a little heavy handed on it, so I might do a, a heaping pile of a quarter. But our breads come out good. In the machine, you're gonna set it, like I said. Ooh, oh yeah, watch your yeast. If you have a big bag of yeast, watch it. It should be in a container. And always put your xanthan gum in a container. Do not put that in your pantry because you will not use all that xanthan gum um, uh, throughout your baking. It'll take a long time to go through it, so you must refrigerate it so it stays nice and fresh. Okay, now we walk over to our little machine. You plop it in here. Now, I don't know what machine you have or are going to get, but here's a mother cake. When you turn it on, get your spatula, spatula, <laughs> you know, and push, now it's, or for my machine, it's already on a medium setting, so I don't like it too light. We like a little tiny crust on it. And it's on a regular two pound loaf. So then we push start. Paddle's gonna get going. My paddle is in place. Paddle's gonna get going. See my machine? I pull the sides. I know you got raw in there, but pull the sides, get anything that's stuck, get it incorporated. If you want to do it, maybe in, in a few minutes when I started paddling. Um, and we'll come back in a little while and we'll show you what the loaf looks like. Just, our timer just beeped, three hours. There's our beautiful bread, we just took it out. What our family likes to do is usually we let it sit and cool down. Sometimes if it's nighttime, we'll cut it in the morning. I like to just cover it so nothing gets on it, and then we'll show you the finished product. Hey, I forgot to tell you, in the background here, while we are, our bread was taking three hours to bake, hands off, we started a little spring break uh, bagel marathon. So we've got everything bagels, and we've got some cinnamon brown sugar bagels, and oh, over here, oh. we've got some plain bagels. All gluten free. So we'll try that next time on YouTube. All right, we're all done. We took the paddle out of the bread. Don't forget your paddle, because that would hurt your knife. And as you can see from a long day of cooking, we got our bread nice and cooled down at the end of the day. We bagged up our bagels, which we'll catch another time on another segment. But you've got a beautiful colored bread, nice and airy soft and crunchy on the top. Exactly like gluten bread. Only it won't hurt you. It's been a pleasure having you in our kitchen. I just want to let you know, do a favor for all the community, the gluten-free uh, community, when, when you dine out, tell them the severity of your condition. When you eat out, inform the people if you have celiac or if it's a preference. But it doesn't stop you from eating and making whatever you want at home. Thanks.